When I visited the JKL Museum of Telephony a few days ago, I got interested in the military phone they had on display. I thought it would make a cool lab phone to replace the bland lump of plastic I currently use. It has the cool Autovan high priority red keys on the right, so you can call the president to avert a nuclear war if necessary. You can get them relatively easily on eBay. Problem is, this TA1042AU field phone is a digital phone and will not work on regular phone lines. You have to convert it back to a regular phone to use it. There is not much info on how to do it and it's not easy at all. So here's a video on how I did it. The first step was to reverse engineer the internal connection to the ringer, handset and keypad. So let's crack it open and let's see what's in there. Okay. I think I have had the usual warranty problem, yes. Okay. Ooh. Well, that's the back data connector. Quite complicated, so you don't really need to use that. Beautiful military stuff here. The gasket. It's hermetic. And notice that these are also sealed. So it's all hermetic everywhere. You can see the, the seal over here. The TA1042 is a pretty complicated digital phone with data and switching capabilities, provided you connect it to the right military switching equipment. Unfortunately, we don't have any of it, so the beautiful board is of no use to us. The first riddle to solve was the off-hook switch. It had no mechanical linkage, so it had to be a non-contact sensor, inductive or magnetic read relay would be my guess. I hear it, so... Maybe it's just a reed switch. Here's a magnet. One ohm, zero. One ohm, zero. So, yeah, there it is. All right, and that's how it works. Next riddle was the keypad. This turned out to be completely non-standard and quite a pain, actually. And underneath the keyboard, it looks like those are actual mechanical switches with, uh, protected by a film. The solder is like a charm. All right. This is much smarter than I thought. So this little guy is actually a dual diode. And what it does is that each button will ground two pins. So this is getting more complicated by the minute. It's, uh, the military keyboard is not arranged at all in a simple matrix arrangement as, as the most of the common phones are. So I would have to do a serious rewiring and of this PCB to make it compatible. On to the next riddle, the handset. I have to find what kind of transducers are used and there is a mystery push to talk button protected by security screws. You cannot screw them out. Uh, we'll have to slot it further to take the push to talk switch. Then it looks like this has been worked on before and this has been glued. Yeah, I forced it open and that was just uh, glued together. So basically it's glued in there with some elastomeric stuff, which is hermetic, I guess. So went around with the X-Acto knife and trying to prod it. I'm gonna get it, there we go. Oops. All right. Okay, so at least I have access to the wires and I can see. try to see if I can find them on the other side of the thing over here and that's a regular speaker so i'm probably okay if i can figure out what's connected to what so i dremeled slots in my beautiful military screws yeah that's enough all oh, right right oh yeah and there's a rubber gasket i can likely probe the stuff from here 
There is a microphone across those two contacts over here. There is the speaker. I can, I can tickle it and make some noise. And these are the two contacts from the push to talk. Yeah, I, I have to disable one of them. So I went for the RCA slimline corded phone for $9.99. All right. This one should be straightforward, except for the keypad and its connections, uh, because it's integrated into the PCB itself. So after a little bit of double-sided PCB reverse engineering, uh, it's actually arranged in a very logical way. So no columns and rows on, on the whole keypad and then the flash and redial off the side. And they all come on the no eight pins on the outside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have to rewire the uh, keyboard over there to match. Okay, now we have to rewire the thing. We need to remove all the diode. That's good enough. Okay, well, those are not too hard. Okay, all the diodes are gone. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of dremolition. Now all I have to do is cut a little square. So you can solder. Well, this is working relatively well so far. So it was a good idea to drill a hole next to the trace and all I do is solder the wire on it. All right, it's all rewired and uh, it's very, very clean on this side. This side not so, but it doesn't matter. So believe me, now it's a regular matrix. So I took the flex circuit out to see what the sensor was. And indeed, it is a read relay. And this one happens to be a double pole single throw and we need a double pole double throw unfortunately read relays i cannot find any that's that small that would be double pole double throw to replace this one so we'll have to find out something else and, and that's the solution that i uh, arrived at i basically will place the board over here i remove the sensor and uh, i just uh, drill a little hole just right the uh, hook switch is it goes like this so i had to move some of the capacitors from one side of the board to the other because it was interfering but now here is the off hook switch so i intend to put a screw and just epoxy into the to the end of the other thing There is a microphone which I uh, checks the dynamic microphone. Uh, so I have to swap it for the electret here on this one. So you can see the result here and the electret within the adapter will look exactly like the dynamic microphone it replaces. There we go. All right, so with a little bit of luck. Up, there we go. And one last detail in the handset, I need to disable the push to talk wiring. Just taking that little loop away was enough to do it. The inputs have been brought in parallel to the two terminal. The keyboard, the eight cables input go to the keyboard here. The ringer goes 
to the plus and minus of the original ringer except they go through the ringer volume button and switch beforehand and also in parallel with the ringer I have a 1k resistor and it goes to the LED, the ring LED. The mic and the speaker they go to the connector down there. So here it is, the finished TA1042 military phone. It'll work its way inside and it's good under warranty again. Uh, beefy connector. All right. Demonstration. So uh, I should be able to hook it up to either line here. I'll choose this one. Those are nice instant connectors. Very grippy. Okay. I should be on line one. See if that works. This is a nice 1980s telephone, by the way. I'll give you a demo in a minute. Um, I can make it only the light. So excellent, works as the general intended. Hello, hello gentlemen, can you hear me through the military phone? Let's see if the, the generates the correct tones. So you, you, now I know the number of my fax lines, so this is all working fine. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, so that's working too. Uh, then the last thing is the the famous Otto Vaughn buttons. Man, those are hilarious and scary at the same time. So I don't have an Otto Vaughn switch, but uh, I can describe what they do. So it's by order of priority and they basically they, they trump any other call that was done before they go right over it so p is for priority is any government task requiring expeditious action so this is to be expeditious and i think i wired it on redial so uh, it's been downgraded to redial uh then I is for immediate and, and that's a lot scarier situation which gravely affects security of national and allied forces federal government actions essential to national survival uh, this is this is this is getting intense then there's the F for flash is for command and control of military forces essential to defense and retaliation Conduct of diplomatic negotiations critical to the arresting or limiting of hostilities. So this one, there's already war going on. And then the uh, FO button, which is flash override, and it's not uh, f off, as you would think. So the FO button is for the President of the United States, Secretary of Defense, and Joint Chief of Staff. So not many people are supposed to press that button, certainly not me, when declaring either defense condition one or defense emergency. Sync NORAD when declaring either defense condition one or air defense emergency and other national authorities as the president may authorize. So basically, when you press that button, you are in deep doo-doo, the uh, nuclear bombs are flying and uh, we should stop watching YouTube. <laughs> Scary buttons, though, thanks. On a lighter note, this is another phone rescue. So 80s, or I could know, late 70s with fake wood and, and uh, straight lines. And it's, a, it's a completely failed product based on a Japanese telephone. Um, so it's supposed to be a phone and an alarm uh, station. So if you press alarm, like a, a theft alarm or a fire alarm, it it beeps pretty badly and it also calls an, a, a predefined number. 
it also has uh, external triggers. I put little buttons on it. So I think this is that one. Oh, yes, this is the fire. And the other one is a theft one. And it has a little gun. So this, I call it the. This is my 007 phone. And no wonder that thing failed in the marketplace. Anyhow, uh, that's it. That's uh, how uh, to transform a uh, TA 1042 for uh, regular phone line usage. And uh, next time you call me, and if I'm the lab, I'll answer for that one. And uh, if it's a YouTube emergency and you're the president, uh, don't forget to use the cough button. Bye! It has a remote control hidden underneath here. You can trigger the alarm from just anywhere by pressing the alarm button.